Good morning and welcome. The Lord be with you. I'm Mary Austin and I will welcome I'm welcoming all of you to worship today. We expend a special welcome to visitors this Sunday and everyone who may be watching on YouTube later today. We're glad to have you with us and invite you to come back anytime you can. I'd like to invite everyone to take a moment to sign the friendship registers at the end of each pew and place them in the offering plate when it is passed. If this is your first time, please leave your mailing address so we can send you a card of thank you. So I have some announcements to share this morning and they are in your bulletin. You can follow along with me if you'd like. Our church family has been saddened and diminished by the death of Colleen Wheeler on September 3rd. Her interment will take place Saturday, October 28th at 1 p.m. at the Glenwood Shelby Hills Cemetery in Bristol, Tennessee, followed by her memorial service at 2 p.m. at Central Presbyterian Church in Bristol, Virginia. The white rose at the front of the sanctuary was given in memory of Colleen and CPC's Stephen ministers have blessed us with that rose. Today, we have some meetings to announce. Presbyterian women will resume today at 10, at 12 o'clock, following the service in the fellowship hall. It's the New Horizons Bible study, the power and presence of Jesus Christ in Luke's Acts. Reverend Dr. Olive, Malibur, all women are invited to attend. Please see Shalda after the service. And I have an announcement that I'm going to invite Brew up. Good morning. The Togetherness team would like to invite everyone to a special potluck in the fellowship hall immediately following service next week. This is an opportunity to fellowship together and to get better acquainted with Pastor Chris and our three newest members, Pam Linkus and Joe and Linda Wilson. The team will be providing grilled hot dogs, chili, buns, and condiments. So we ask you to please bring a dessert or a side to share, or both, or, or neither, but please plan to join us. We hope to see you there. For those real hot dogs? <laughs> real beef hot dogs? Yes, they are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and please remember that this is the second Sunday, and it's the two cents a meal offering that we make, and so please give generously. It's a very, people are very thankful for whatever you can give. And we are going to have an announcement a little later from Kathy Carpenter, who's joining us today, uh, about Feed the Flock. And the worship committee news is that the Lord's Supper, when an individual prefers to have the Lord's Supper brought to them in the pews, he or she will be offered a choice between getting a communion packet or receiving the elements by intinction. Uh, one last announcement. The four-year table and room at the table, the community outreach program that we have had for three years, uh, took a real hit during the COVID epidemic. And so we are asking people to try to make donations as they can, especially for your table. There's two, room of the table, which is here at the church, and for your table, which is at the warehouse at Three Strand Church. So if you can, if you like some more information about that, you certainly can see me after the service. And I think Angie has an announcement. Good morning, everybody. So the children started practicing last this past Wednesday. Um, we meet every Wednesday uh, and have kind of a Bible-based, uh, not Sunday school, but we'll call it Wednesday school, and music and play and fun. Um, and it's just our time of fellowship and kind of worship together on our Wednesday evenings. And I would just invite any of you who know of any children in the community, if you have neighbors, grandchildren, uh, friends, 
we just welcome them with open arms. We had four kids here. Um, I know sports get in the way. It's no longer a sacred evening um, necessarily for practices and whatnot. But if you would invite any children, we welcome them with, them with open arms. It's at 5.30, 5.30 to 6.15 Wednesdays downstairs in the choir room. Thank you. Six. Correct? Thank you. Thank you, G. Okay, please remember in prayer these following folks in our congregation. Jennifer Macon and family, Tay, Steve, and Craig Taylor, Margot Thompson, family and loved ones of Mary Jane McMillian, Joy Shelton, Gail Custer, Evelyn Kimball, Mary Childress, Nicholas Keeling, Randy Thompson, Herb Miller, Jason Hammond, Patty Walker Jordan, and Fran Hart. Are there any other prayer concerns in the congregation? Again, I welcome all, and we're going to have a prayer first before we greet each other. And let's do the U Kirk update first. Got some okay. Yes. Kathy, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am I was the campus minister at U Kirk and I am now the outreach minister. Um, at U Kirk, and I wanted to thank you. I know that this Tuesday night you all are doing Feed the Flock, and we're always grateful for that. It's always a good time to be there with the students, and they have the best time. So thank you so much. And then next Saturday, the U Kirk students will and Emily will be here um, to stock the shelves for your um, for the your what is it called for your table for your table. So um, we're, we're working on feeding everybody at this point, aren't we? <laughs> I just appreciate all of your support, um, and the students do too, and if there are other things that we can help you with, please let us know, and um, thank you. Thank you, Kat. Pastor Chris? Especially Jennifer and Don Macon and their family, and thereby help them. 
them bear their burden of grief. Shall we pray? Almighty God, you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You are God of the resurrection. We pray that you would be near to those who grieve the loss of Colleen Wheeler. Comfort them, support them, draw them close to you and close to one another. Fill their eyes with the light of your promises that they may see beyond human sight a home within your love, where pain is gone and frail flesh turns to glory. Banish all fear, O oh God, and wipe away painful tears. Let their grieving be for their healing, and let their hope be fixed upon Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now you may greet. Greet one another. Yes. <laughs> yes, take a few moments to greet one another, please. Yes. And now during the prelude, let us center ourselves for worship. join me in the call to worship. Sisters and brothers beloved by Christ, we gather to worship the God of steadfast love, with whom there is forgiveness and the power to redeem. In Christ, our sin and brokenness are remade into wisdom, strength, and compassion. There is no need to hide from our Savior, no need for shame. Let us lift our hearts and our voices in praise and thanksgiving.
join me in prayer. Holy God, Lord of Eden's garden, as we retell your story of Adam and Eve and the serpent, we hear that hubris and human frailty have existed since creation. By the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, grant us insight into the allure of the forbidden. Strengthen us in Jesus' saving grace. Help us to put regret, blame, and disappointment behind us. Teach us instead to accept responsibility and to live into a future where we walk in the ways of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. The psalmist wrote, If God kept track of sins, who would stand a chance? But with God, there is forgiveness. May God hear our request for mercy. Merciful God, in awareness of our sin, we sometimes wish to hide from your presence. Like Adam and Eve, we wish to hide from your guiding wisdom, turn from your will, and follow other voices and influences. We have pursued our own desires at the expense of those around us and blame others instead of accepting responsibility. You alone can restore us. Give us the courage to tell you truthfully what we have done, praying for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Beloved in Christ, do not lose heart. In steadfast love, the Lord looks upon us and reclothes us in grace. Through your confession, you are returned to right relationship with your Lord, with others, and even within yourself. Know that we are all being renewed day by day through the grace of Christ, the grace that Christ extended to us. Thanks be to God. Oh 
us unite our hearts together in prayer. We are waiting, O oh God, to hear your word, for in your word is our hope. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we be attentive to what you will say to us today. In the name of Christ, we ask this and all things. Amen. So today, we will be talking about um, letting go of blame and choosing to not blame anymore and uh, choosing to forgive things for which we might harbor uh, ill will or ill feelings and instead to accept responsibility and move forward. So our scripture readings are like a yin and a yang. There's the um, example from Genesis of Adam and Eve, and then there's a example from the book of Acts about collaboration. So here from scripture, the very, very familiar story of Adam and Eve and the serpent. Now, for those of you who might not know, God created the world, he created it good, he put fish and plants and animals and people and declared it was all good. And then um, uh, when humankind was created, they were given one, one rule, just one. And this is what happened. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. The serpent said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eye and that the tree was be, to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit and ate it and she also gave it some of it to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Then they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Then the man said, the woman who gave you to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. <laughs> then the Lord said, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate it. This is the word of God from the book of Genesis. So now we go to a reading from the book of Acts in the early church where there was a dilemma because um, the church was feeding the widows and the older people and there got to be a conflict in the church. And I know you know that's very rare, but it turns out that since the earliest days of the church there has been conflict. And this is how they decided to address this conflict. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, 
the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and full of wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They presented the seven who were chosen to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. So this 